Hello all you friends, pals, and buddies of mine. If you follow along with my farm channel, you'll know that my grandpa purchased a farm, which is the last farming episode I believe I have out. So me and him are going to crop share that farm. And so this will be my first year as a real full-on farmer. But I had to get a loan out for all the inputs for seed, chemicals, and fertilizer. All that fun stuff. I got a loan through the government, and when it comes to the government, paperwork. I have to sign all this paperwork of my approval, and I will officially be a real farmer this year. So it's really exciting, so be sure to follow along with all of that farm content this year. But besides all that, I'm about to go out and work on the camper. I'm going to try and patch up that hole in the floor. So if you've been paying attention to like the community posts that I put up, uh, I've been in Texas and filming that trip for my other YouTube channel, which I will put a link in the description below. And I'll also put a little video card at the end in case you guys want to check that out. It's worth a good watch. So let's go out and see what we can get ourselves into. All right. The first thing I want to try is starting it. I'll let it run for a while to keep that battery primed and that motor lubed. I have a feeling it's not going to start. <laughs> let's see how she do. started when it's this cold out, so he's a good runner. So I'm gonna let this run for a while, and we're gonna go back here, and we are going to work on that hole in the floors. I'll tell you a little bit about what's going on with that. All right, so kind of staring at this big gap in the floor, trying to figure out kind of where I left off. Looks like I had a little list made out too. I think I just left off with uh, the floor supports. Cause I remember I ran out of screws. So I think I just need to measure and cut some floor supports, which to do that, I'm probably gonna have to do some wall work, I think. So let's get to it. Yeah, so that's done along the wall to about right here. Woo, it's snow in my back. Looks like the first thing I'll have to do is pry out all this crap. And then um, patch it. Then I can put in my, my floor supports. I'm gonna attempt to cut this piece out with this saw. Maybe I'll get lucky. It's quite rotten, so you'd think it would come out pretty easy, but. Ah, if I bust it off over here further, it's really thin right there. Aha! Looks like a charm. Down the trash hole you go. I might as well tell you right now on this stuff, on new campers, they use a corrugated poly like a sheet um, it's like a it comes in a roll but it's like 160 bucks or something online for that so for now I'm just gonna try and repair the top then I'm gonna patch this up kind of temporarily with some uh, probably some flex tape or something like that Underneath of uh, this box is the gas tank. So I need to pull this off and take a look at the gas tank. I know there's another one for the second gas tank, which doesn't work. I'm hoping that maybe I, if I can access the gas tank pretty well, I might be able to repair that second tank because this thing needs two gas tanks. <laughs> uh, otherwise, you gotta fill up every 60 miles. And that's no fun. Oh, hopefully this heater works. 
marshy B. I actually can't see the tank. The tank must be further in the middle. I'm gonna turn this thing on. Off, I mean. I got the bottom patched. So what I'm working on now is I'm gonna take this piece of wood and run it along this metal frame piece underneath. So I gotta pry this floor up, try and slide it under there. And that's where I'm gonna give support here. You can see it's sagging because this is where my flooring won't stay put together. I'm going to try and pry this subfloor up just to get it started. Stay on my tippy toes. I'm gonna try and pry here. There we go. Oh, that was so much easier. So now I just gotta try and get this level with it. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to drill it right through the frame. Um, probably use, I'll probably have to go buy some carriage bolts. And then this will be uh, a really good solid mounting point for any kind of framing I want to use, I guess. Right here, there's a metal frame running this way. And then obviously right here is the metal frame running this way. Really, no matter what I do, I have a solid mounting point as long as I drill through the frame um, which is what they did right here there's a nail sticking out that's right into the frame why they didn't run one along this frame piece though I have no idea must just not have matched up when they were assembling it I suppose but I'm gonna take advantage of it and use it and I'll have a solid subfloor now stop all right, we're getting out first thing in the morning. Gonna go work on this RV here. One thing that I found in this, this little heater. Looks like a nice little thing. I mean, it's pretty warm already. Okay, I've unraveled all my house wrap to show you the framework I did. It's basically done. Except I gotta cut one little piece for the cover right here. Looky what I got! That is actual RV underbelly. I went to an RV store, which is like 35 minutes from here, and they had this for $9. I got this big, huge thing of it. Uh, I've been looking all over the place for something I could use, and turns out I just should have went to the source. Who the funk? I found these cool little things I didn't know existed. Little carriage bolt things you hammer in there um, they got little spikes on them well that worked good so so now my carriage bolts are set in place and uh, I should be able to bolt and unbolt those as I need if I ever need to so I just got to measure from here to there and then the length up to right on this piece and then Behind it, this will have to be its own section. So I'm gonna start here. You can see there's one where I drilled through, and two, two there. So I ended up going underneath and kind of picking where I needed them actually. One's right here, see that? And the other one, I missed the board. <laughs> oh, that sucks. What I'm gonna have to do is, I have to pass this, and then, uh, Put another one at the end here. So we're gonna go 58 and a quarter. Perfect! That was easy peasy. So what I'm gonna have to do is somehow mark my holes, drill them, and once I get it tacked up, it, I'll be able to drill the new holes right through this so it'll be easy. I have two gas lines that are 
They just have a couple of brackets that are holding them up. Rather than taking them out, I think what I'm gonna do is uh, put it over top of it to kind of protect them. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, it looks clean, <laughs> it looks good. The only thing is, whenever I have to access it, I'll have to take these uh, bolts out. This is no big deal. What the f***, Poppy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the cat attacked me. Ugh. Snowball. I gotta sit inside here for a little bit because I can't feel, can't feel my ass or my fingers. Whoo! It is cold on the ground. So I whipped up this thing. I had to repair this side. Kind of broke apart when I was trying to pry it off of there. See, I got my holes covered now, uh, but I had to cut a slit through here for this gas line here. And then uh, that way I could get around it. So I'm actually gonna go underneath with some flex tape and fix that crack. And then I'm gonna have to run a second board right here, basically just for a mounting point for that. I'm gonna use wood screws and screw it into that. So I'm kind of coming along with my insulation. Um, I think I might staple some insulation to the outside of that little box too, and just kind of wrap it up with insulation because that's like really thin wood and it's an open gap really. Uh, so I think it, it needs some insulation. <laughs> All right, I got it sealed up somewhat as you can see now. I pried this microwave out of here and it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be back here. Um, looks actually pretty good. It's in good shape. Uh, I thought maybe I was going to find a bunch of crap in here because I could see there's like scraps of wood in there and stuff. But this sucker is heavy. So I think I'm going to toss it. I was thinking about putting an air fryer in here anyways. So I think I'm going to go that route with an air fryer because this thing is heavy as heck. Holy hell. So I'm kind of just going around tearing off any trim that's left and stuff. I want to prep it for just start getting some paneling in here. I was going to leave this and just paint it, but I think I'm going to tear it apart now because there's a rotten corner up here. So I'm going to try and pull it back and take a look back there. Make sure it's not anything worse. Bird's nest in there. You see that? <laughs> This isn't made very well. All that it is is this little piece of freaking siding crap. All right, so having lunch, I got to thinking about this little area and you know, I need to kind of focus on one thing rather than getting so spread out. I'm gonna leave this area for now <clears throat> until I can kind of get some uh, adhesive to stick so I can seal it up around the outside underneath I'm talking about underneath and then that area <clears throat> I'm just gonna leave it for now because I need to start building rather than tearing apart <laughs> because I'm gonna get burnt out of this if I keep just tearing apart and finding problems that I need fixed uh, so one thing at a time but what I really want to do is I want to finish my roof so I'm gonna insulate with the rest of this insulation today. And try and get as much as I can. And then I'll probably need at least one more roll. I want to get the roof done so I can put some lighting in. Um, that way once it gets nicer, I can work on this at night. It would be nice to have something that actually looks finished too. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna insulate now. Okay, so it's gonna be tough lighting to work with. I have, you see where the house wrap stops, so that's where I'm gonna start. And I'm gonna start. My underbelly's blowing away. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna start stapling it up, and then I'll pull these uh, cedar shingles out. Then I got this one cut, so then I'll staple the next. 
and I'll just keep working. Ah! I'm stuck. I gotta make sure I don't staple over any wires for the lights, which I don't think there was a whole lot of lights in the ceiling. All right, you can see behind me, it's starting to get pretty far. That's about as far as I'm gonna get now. I have a wire in here somewhere, so I need to cut a hole, but yeah. Um, it's going together pretty good. So it's right here. Depending on what kind of lights I get, I might uh, get rid of some wiring or uh, if the new LEDs, if I'm able to just use like a bunch off of one, which I think I probably can make it a lot easier. It's actually getting warm now. I don't know if that's just the sun or the heater. I've decided to leave all this insulation. I was like ripping it out. This stuff is so dang thin. I'm just gonna double up, I guess. It's gonna be well insulated, at least the roof. Check it out. Got another roll of insulation. So I'm gonna try and finish this, hopefully. <laughs> All right. If you look above me, it's done. So the whole entire roof is now insulated. Looks better. A little cleaner yeah I didn't go and insulate into the cupboards because there's already a little bit of insulation and I didn't think it really needs it but air gap from the cupboards you know I don't know plus I, I ran out of insulation I used everything I had and I basically just had enough to do exactly what I kind of set forth to um, yeah I mean, everything looks, looks good uh, I realize there's a pretty good gap in this door on the side, so I need to use some gap filler to spray around this door to help insulate this a little bit. I need, I've got some uh, weather stripping coming to do the inside of the door as well. So that'll be nice too. And I'm going to do my house as well with it, but that'll come in a few days. So it'll be here this week. I don't know if that'll be on this video or not. Oh, I wanted to show you guys. I was talking about roof lighting uh, previously. So this right here is one which you guys saw me cut out. But then if you look right there, there's another one. Uh, this is all there is for ceiling lighting. So hopefully those LEDs, I can just run off of what I have here, which I'm sure I can because these were halogen lights and with the new LEDs, they pull a lot less electricity, so I think that I can probably run basically as many as I want probably off of these. Um, I didn't do my research on that, but uh, I think that's how they work though. All right, I've come to a point now where I need to start putting some real money into this thing, starting with the ceiling and the lights. But what I've decided to do is have myself a little fundraiser. So, maybe you noticed I've been wearing this Crooked Rose hat, and so what I've done is come up with two designs. I have this Iowa one in black and gray, and also I have the one that I'm wearing, but in tan. So I've changed this color. I decided I like the other two colors better, so I went with those. The easiest way to do this is just to go check out the description, because I'm going to put all the information you're gonna need down there but if you want to stick around I can tell you some details too what I'm gonna do is if you donate $30 you get yourself a hat if you donate $60 you can have two hats you get the point $30 per hat gets you a hat <laughs> um, if you want to just donate less than $30 you can um, it just I can't justify the shipping and then the hat material cost too. I'm going to be making all of these logos in my house. So they're all gonna be handmade by yours truly. So that's pretty cool. If you think the hats just straight up suck and you're like, hey, I'll help you out, but I don't want one of your dumb hats. That's fine. But 
all the money I make will go right back into the RV and buy stuff like maybe a shower down the road, but I have not got to that bathroom yet, but I need to. I need a toilet. I need a toilet. Um, I'm probably going to have to do some engine work because everyone's been griping on me for how bad of a job I did. So, probably going to have to put some money towards that. But the main thing is, it's just going to help me put out videos faster. If you're from the UK or Canada or outside the United States, you can still get a hat. It's just going to be $20 to ship it about anywhere outside of the States. So, if you want a hat, I can get you one if you just tack on another $20. So it'll be $50 for a friggin' hat, which is ridiculous. If you don't care, so be it. Uh, I can get you one. And then after this video, I'm going to try and keep these in stock so you don't have to buy one right away. If you're seeing this like a month from now, um, you can still get one from me. Just contact me through Instagram or if you just send it to the Venmo or PayPal that I'm going to have linked, I'll get a notification and just fill out your information properly and I can still get you one. That's the goal. So don't forget to subscribe to these videos because it helps me out and also if you hit that little bell thing, turns out you get notified. That's pretty cool. Don't forget to watch that Texas video that I'm going to have paired up after this in the little card. And subscribe to that channel because I'm going to try and put more content out on it. And I'm hoping once I get this camper done, I'm going to have this camper in some of those videos for traveling. Thanks again ahead of time for all your help and keep on keeping on. Psych! Guess what just came in the mail? Yeah, you know what it is. It's that weather stripping. So, I got some weather stripping here. I also got this uh, leftover door stuff, door and window. Um, it's actually from when I did the original windows up front. Still liquidy though in there. You're supposed to use this when it's between 60 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, but I have this heater right here. That's been running all day, and I have it set to 70. Uh, it's actually pretty warm in here. So, I'm gonna do it anyways. I'll just leave this heater running for a while until I feel like this might be cured. It'll be all right. Just don't tell anyone. So let's open these packages. Oh, I know what this is. Let's start with this. It's like Christmas morning. Okay. I bought this used, I didn't know that. Must have saved a couple of bucks. <laughs> So what this is, is like this thick, squishy stuff. It's hollow, but it's a thick, rubbery material. And uh, I've never used this before, so I'm gonna try it out. I see why it was discounted. Someone's already unpeeled some of it. Doesn't matter though, because I was smart, read the reviews, and this dude said, you have to get Gorilla Spray Adhesive. Even brand new, he said that that strip just doesn't work. He said, but if you spray this on, that the doors will fall off before it does. It's even got a little ball in there. Must be some heavy duty stuff. Can you tell I cleaned in here too? See the floor again. Um, I'm gonna do this right away. Flip it off. Let's do this. Let's see if this whole stuff still works. Bummer. This would have been perfect. This one's gaps and cracks in that window and door. This one. This is an aluminum door frame though, so it doesn't really matter. So I might as well just use this one up. Ah, doesn't want to stop. Gosh dang, I need a Flashlight, make sure I got everything. This little spot there, I guess. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna get this little spot. All right, we'll let that do its thing, and then we'll start working on another strip. There's gonna be some tough lighting conditions to do this. So I just look like a freaking shadow. I'm just gonna go and spray this Gorilla Glue. I'm not sure how it's gonna come out. I didn't even read what the temperature rating on this is. Might be doing this a second time in the spring, who knows. 
Yeah, she look. Oh yeah. So this will help keep me warm in the winter time. And be cool in the summertime. But I can tell right away that what that guy meant where that adhesive crap would have been. Junk. Looks like uh, whoever bought this before tried to use some double-sided 3M tape and gave up. <laughs> Sucker. So on this side though, I'm going to run it along this side of it because I can go all the way to the corners and I'll get those corners nice and sealed up. The only reason I can't on this side was because of these stupid old hinges where the screen door was. So it's better just to let this kind of smush into it. All right, conclusion. Gorilla spray seems to be working great. It's even holding up this one that's completely upside down right there. So highly recommend Gorilla Spray if you do this job. That dude was right. I have a feeling though that I will be respraying these because of how cold it is. The door is like a hundred times harder to close now, but it's like you're sealing up an airplane door. It goes. <laughs> Hear that? <laughs> it's a good seal. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna go do my house now. So this is the real goodbye. See ya.